Hello, this is Mr. Howard. In this video, we're going to be looking at some basic definitions for uh, functions and relations. And we're going to cover some concepts that we will be using uh, regardless of what parent functions we're looking at, and also some concepts that you will use heavily when you get to calculus. So, this video is targeted for my pre calculus students, but many of these concepts are covered in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 as well. All right, well, let's look at our first definition here. And we have that a, the definition of a function, function definition here. A relation, which is a set of points. A relation is just a set of ordered pairs. And a function is a relation in which each x value is assigned to only one y value. And that means that it passes the uh, vertical line test. So for example, if we had a coordinate plane here and we drew um, a graph that you know, looked, say, like this. This would be considered a function because it passes the vertical line test everywhere. It never fails the vertical line test. If it fails the vertical line test, that means there is more than one y value assigned for each x value. So let's draw an example of that. Let's draw one that would not pass the vertical line test. So for example, that could be something like this. Okay, this fails the vertical line test in multiple places. So for example, if we draw a vertical line like this through here, we see we uh, intersect this graph here and here. So two places. So let's say if, if this is where x equals 2, x equals 2 has two y values assigned to it on this relation. So therefore it is not a function. It fails the vertical line test. Alright, the next definition, one to one relation. So when we see one to one, and if we're asked if this is one to one, uh, that is defined as a relation, which again is a set of points, in which each y value is assigned to only one x value. So that means that it passes the horizontal line test. So basically it's a very similar definition to this one up here, except that y value is listed first and x value is second. Remember up here it was in which each x value is assigned to only one y value. Here each y value is assigned to only one x value. And it will pass the horizontal line test instead of the vertical line test. Okay, so let's look at some examples here. If we draw... Uh, coordinate plane here again and then we we draw a graph let's draw one that would fail the horizontal line test and wouldn't be considered one to one very common graph that is not one to one would be a parabola just a basic parabola this fails the horizontal line test because we can draw many different horizontal lines it only has to fail the horizontal line test once as far as that goes but it's more common where it would fail uh, in multiple places. You could draw many horizontal lines. That's not a perfect horizontal line, but you get the idea. And notice that we're crossing uh, this graph here and here. So it failed the horizontal line test. Therefore, it is not a one-to-one -one relation. So let's draw an example of one that would be considered one-to-one. -one. And a basic graph, um, we could draw almost anything, but something similar to what we drew uh, up in example one. So this graph we can draw horizontal lines wherever we want and it only hits it once. So therefore this would be considered a one-to-one -one relation. Okay, so function passes the vertical line test. One-to-one -one passes the horizontal line test. So let's look at this example. This one here passes the vertical line test so it would be a function but it failed the horizontal line test so it would not be one-to-one. -one. This example passes the vertical line test everywhere so it is a function and it also passes the horizontal line test so it is a one-to-one -one relation or in this case one-to-one -one function. Alright let's move on to some other definitions. So next we have x-intercept. Well you know what that is I'm sure by now and also y-intercepts. x-intercepts are just the point on the graph where the relation touches the x-axis. Okay x-intercepts also have some other names. You, If you see the word root or you see the word zero or solution all of those mean the same thing. That's, that's all uh, referring to an x-intercept. Okay, so all of those words could be used to describe this. So if we draw this graph, uh, for example, like this, 
this has x-intercepts would be defined as this point here where it's crossing the x-axis and this point here where it's crossing the x-axis. So x-intercepts are just where the graph touches the x-axis. Okay? All right. Same thing for the y-intercept. Again, I'm, I'm confident that you understand these definitions. If we draw a graph uh, like this, our y-intercept would be where we cross this x-axis here. So our y-intercept would be right there at that point. All right, next, interval notation. Now, this is very important. Uh, you may have used this some in Algebra 2. Uh, it's possible maybe that you didn't, but uh, interval notation will be introduced here if you haven't already seen it in Algebra 2. And um, I, to me, interval notation is actually easier. I think it's a more concise way to... Uh, to describe intervals as compared to the inequality setup that uh, you've used probably most often. Uh, so let's look at this. Interval notation. Intervals can be shown using inequalities or with parentheses not equal and square brackets equal. Okay, so here this interval is using inequalities, but if we wanted to write it using our brackets, we could use. Um, parentheses to not be equal or if it's undefined and then a square bracket to be equal. So if we wanted to write this in interval notation uh, using uh, parentheses and brackets we would do it this way. We Our minimum value is always of the interval will always go on the left so it would be negative infinity and then comma 5. So our biggest value goes on the right. So that's the basic part of this interval notation. And then if it's undefined or not included, you get a parentheses. So negative infinity is undefined. So infinity and negative infinity always get a parentheses. And then 5, you notice here, because of this equal to bar underneath the inequality, 5 is included. So we're going to draw a bracket like this. Okay, so this interval goes from negative infinity to 5, and 5 is included. All right, now let's look at this example. So we have um, x is greater than or equal to 7, but less than 19. So if we were going to do this with the parentheses and uh, brackets for interval notation, we would write our smallest value on the left, 7, comma, our largest value on the right, 19. And then we would apply our parentheses or brackets. Because we have, uh, we're greater than or equal to the 7, that means 7 is included, we need to put a bracket around 7. 19, notice, is not included here. We do not have the equal to bar underneath, so we would just put parentheses. So that would be the correct way. Now, we're going to use this a lot uh, moving forward, so we need to get used to using this notation. Notice um, it really uh, ends up taking, I think this is actually a little faster and, and visually a little easier to see. Uh, what's going on with uh, the interval notation. All right, let's move on to a few more definitions, and then we'll apply this, which is what it's all about, right? Okay, so increasing. A relation increases on an interval if as x increases, y increases. All right, so if we look at a graph here, and let's say... Um, it's shaped like this. And we wanted to identify where it is increasing. That's going to be from uh, approximately right here where it turns from. Notice here it's decreasing here. Then it changes direction and it starts increasing. So say from about right here to uh, right here where it changes again. So this interval would be considered increasing. I'm going to abbreviate that. This would be an increasing interval here from because it's going up from left to right. Another way to say this is it's going up from left to right. So that's considered increasing. So the interval that it's increasing on, we've got that identified. Uh, if we draw another graph here, and it's like this. Okay, and we want to define d 
decreasing, it's a relation. A relation decreases on an interval if as x increases, y decreases. So it's going down from left to right. Another way to say that is it's going down from left to right. So that would be this is decreasing from about here to about here. Okay, this would be decreasing. That interval, it is decreasing. Okay, so down from left to right, decreasing. Up from left to right, increasing. And when you get into calculus, when you start working with derivatives, which are the slopes of the tangent lines, when the derivative or the slope of the tangent line is positive, then that's said to be increasing. And when the slope of the tangent line is negative, that's considered decreasing. Okay, so that increasing, decreasing, we're going to be using that a lot. The other thing that a, a relation or a function or a graph can do is be constant over uh, some um, range or domain, okay? So, uh, and I really should use the word interval there. It's a relation is constant over an interval if it remains at the same value. So if we draw a graph like this, and I'm trying to draw this as straight across as I can, like that. So it's completely flat. It's not increasing, it's not decreasing. It's going flat from left to right. So in other words, the y value is constant here. When the y value is constant, it's considered uh, to be constant. So if, say from here to here, this would be constant across this interval. Okay, so that's all the definitions. Now we can start applying it. All right, let's look at this last example in your notes. Um, so first thing it asks us, is this a function? All right, so we look, does it pass the vertical line test everywhere? Um, over here, notice you're included here because you've got a solid dot. Remember, when your dot's filled in, that's included. When it's open, it's not included. So it technically does pass because this dot's open here. But right here, we've got a solid dot and a solid dot. So we would fail the vertical line test right there. And that's enough to say that this is not a function. So no, it's not a function. All right. So let's look at the next part. It says, is, uh, or what are the y-intercepts? What are the y-intercepts? Okay, so y-intercepts, remember, are just where it crosses the y-axis. And that occurs only one time right here. And that's when y is equal to 2. So that would be, we could say 0 comma 2, or you could just write 2. That would be fine. Okay, what are the zeros, the solutions, the x-intercepts? Well, that happens right here. We'll use another color this time. That happens right here. And it happens right here. And it happens right here. So three different places. So we need to identify those. We're going to approximate this one as negative 0.2. So negative 0.2. Uh, the next one, that's right at 4. Looks like it's exactly at 4. And then again out here, 5, 6, 7. We'll call that about 7.7. Uh, 7.7. .7. Okay, so we have three zeros, three solutions, three x-intercepts here on this graph. Okay, now it asks us this function notation f of 5. This means, remember, this is f of x. So when x is equal to 5, what is the y value? This is what this is asking us. This is a review. So when x is 5, what is the value of the, what is the y value of this? All right, well, when x is equal to 5, that would be right here. When x is equal to 5, y is negative 1, 2, 3. So we'll say negative 3. Okay. Next, is it 1 to 1? Well, we need to see if... I need to get that dot off there. Hold on. Whoops. All right. Okay, so 1 to 1. Does it pass the horizontal line test? That's what we're asking ourselves. And no, look, it fails it here, 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 many places. So no, this is not one-to-one -one because it fails the horizontal line test. So no. Okay, next, similar to uh, question D, question F, F of zero. So when X is equal to zero, what is Y? Well, that's right here at two. Okay, increasing intervals. 
increasing interval. So where is this graph increasing? Well, it's increasing in more than one place. Okay, it's increasing right through here, and it's increasing here. So we're going to define that as we're going to use our interval notation with parentheses. So that is from negative 6, okay, right here. It starts increasing right here about negative 6, right in here. I'm not including it because notice you have a, a discontinuity here. You're not continuous here on the graph. So I'm, I'm going to say that it's not inclusive of negative 6. It just starts here. So I'm not putting a bracket over it. It's really undefined what it's doing right here whether it's increasing, decreasing, or constant. Okay, and then we follow along, and it's still increasing, still increasing, still increasing, and then we start to turn right here. So that looks like that's about um, 1.2 or so. We'll call that 1.2. So comma 1.2. We're going to put a parenthesis around that too because notice that at 1.2 it, it starts to change. It's really undefined right here as to whether it's increasing or decreasing. So we're going to put just a parenthesis there. And then the other interval that it's increasing on is this part right through there. Okay, So we're going to define that interval notation. We've got an open circle here. It's undefined here at uh, x equals 5. So that's from 5. And then notice we have an arrow. It's kind of hard to see, but there is an arrow head right there so it goes on to positive infinity and we always put a parenthesis with positive infinity or negative infinity so there is our interval that it's increasing alright decreasing okay it's constant here it's increasing here and then right here it starts to decrease so that's from 1.2 that's the point we used earlier right here notice where it stops increasing it's going to start decreasing in this case and it decreases all the way down uh, to 5 here. And we'll put a parenthesis around that because it's really undefined right here whether it's increasing or decreasing. Okay, and you'll notice how uh, where we stop decreasing, we start increasing here. Where we uh, stopped increasing here at 1.2, we started decreasing. Okay, constant interval. And it could also go, by the way, it could stop increasing and then go uh, constant too. So I don't want you to think that just because it stops increasing, that means it has to start decreasing because that's not always true, but just in this case it was. All right, constant interval. Uh, that's going to be where it's flat. So that's going to be here uh, from negative infinity. We always write the smallest number first. Notice there is an arrowhead here. It's kind of hard to see. So that's going to be from negative infinity to uh, negative 6 here and we're going to put parentheses around both because it's negative infinity always gets a parentheses and then the negative 6 it's really undefined here uh, whether it's you notice right here at negative 6 it's kind of starting to increase so we're we're just going to leave that as a parentheses okay intervals where f of x is greater than or equal to 0 and we're almost done so let's identify those so we want to find out when is y, when are the y values greater than or equal to 0. And that's going to occur where we have um, changes where we're crossing the x axis. So that would be right here is an important point, right here is an important point, and right here is an important point. So we're going to have two intervals that we're going to write here. So we're going to call this negative 1.2, uh, pardon me, negative 0.2. That's this point right here. And we're going to put a bracket around this because notice it says when is it greater than or equal to zero. And right here at negative point two, it's equal to zero. So that negative point two is inclusive. So we put the bracket around it. And then it goes all the way over here to four. And we're going to put the bracket around that too because we're equal to zero at four. And it asks us when is it greater than or equal to zero and then we'll come over here we're going to call that 7.7 .7. so from 7 and we're putting a bracket there because it's equal to zero from 7.7 .7, and then notice the arrowhead continues on forever to positive infinity so we put our infinity symbol and we always put a parentheses around that okay two more things and we're done 
domain x values what x values are used well negative infinity it goes on to negative infinity here it's defined for every x value all through this area and even right here at x equals 5 it is defined here it's undefined here but it does have uh, it is defined at x equals 5 right there and then it continues on to positive infinity so we're going to say that that's big R all real numbers we could also write all real x either way big R or all real x I will accept okay what y values are used well notice it goes on forever right here in the y direction so we know that uh, we're gonna have a comma positive infinity here with the parentheses around it. Now we just need to find the minimum y value that's used and that is right down here at negative 5, 6, 7. Right here at negative 7 and notice that we have an open circle here at negative 7 so we're going to put the parentheses. Alright so that's it for this video and I will see you in the next video.